Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying Sasquatch encounters. Now, before I start, I want to let you know that on this channel, I like to share encounters that are more of a slow boil, that tend to create an atmosphere and a mood. If you're a fan of encounters like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. I post new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and if you have your notifications on, you'll be the first to know when those videos go live. All right, let's get right into it. It's hard to believe that it's been 29 years, but it has. I was 12, and for the first time, I was being allowed to go deer hunting. This was meaningful, as I was now being considered a man in the family, someone who could put meat on the table, so to speak. The hunting trip took me to a 200-acre parcel my family owned in Wisconsin. There I'd be hunting with my father, uncle, and cousins. I was no stranger to the property, as I pretty much spent every summer of my childhood there. My cousin was just as excited about my first deer hunting trip as I was, so upon my arrival, he took me out to the woods to show me something unusual. He asked, Want to see something weird? I replied, Yeah. He picked up a big stick, swung and whacked a tree hard. He repeated this several times. I wasn't sure what he was doing until I heard a whack sound in the distance. At first, I thought it was an echo. He handed me the stick and told me to try. Like him, I whacked the tree several times, then waited. Just like before, I got a response far off in the woods. I'll admit, I didn't know what any of that meant, and in some ways, I thought it was kind of cool. My cousin then let out a yelp. Seconds later, something responded. Again, I didn't know what to think about any of what he'd showed me. And before long, we went back toward the cabin. I was fascinated by what could be responding to our wax and yelps. Unable to get the odd incident out of my mind, I went back out to the same spot later. I picked up the branch I'd used before, swung and whacked the tree. Like before, a response came back, but this time from a different part of the property and closer. When I think back, I don't ever recall hearing or knowing people who did tree knocks or vocalizations. It was apparent my cousin knew about it, but I was oblivious. Heck, I didn't even know what a Bigfoot was at that time. Confused, I brought it up to my uncle who was a man of few words. He simply told me to stop knocking on trees and mumbled a name I wasn't familiar with. I shrugged it off and went about the rest of my day. What's odd is it wasn't until much later in my life did I hear that name again, this time from a prominent Bigfoot researcher, Kunbo Baker. That night, I was told where I'd be hunting. They were going to stick me way out at the far end of the property, a place I had been told to avoid before because of how remote it was and that I could get stuck back there due to the bogs and creeks. Looking back now, I do find it ironic I was stuck in the one place I was always told to stay away from. The morning came, and it was chilly. My uncle took me out and dropped me off. 
Before he left, he instructed me to stay put and that he'd come to get me at the end of the day. I nodded and went on my way. This part of the 200 acres was much different than any other part. In fact, the whole atmosphere changed back there. It went from hardwoods to really thick brush, high grass, and, like I mentioned before, bogs and creeks. I went to an old willow tree, which held a rickety and aging tree stand. I put my foot on the first step, applied pressure, and sure enough, my first step broke. I thought to myself, great, in order for me to reach the second step, I'd have to go back, make a running jump for it. Being 12 has its disadvantages, and height was one of them for me at the time. I took a few steps and went for it. I easily made the second step, although I was a bit nervous that it would break too, which would send me to the ground crashing hard. This old tree stand wasn't very sturdy to begin with, as they'd used what appeared to be any old scrap of wood. Using every ounce of caution, I scaled up and took a seat. Time ticked away, and a chill began to settle in me. Not a chill from fright, but because I had been motionless, like a good hunter should be. It was a cloudy day, and the warm rays of sun were being hidden. More time ticked away, and I knew I was doing a good job of being still. As every squirrel and bird came close, oblivious that I was even there, the sun crept toward the horizon. The day was getting away from me, yet I'd not seen a deer. I suspected the shooting hours had passed and that my uncle would show up at any time. Patiently, I waited, and waited, and waited. Dark wasn't far off, and still my uncle hadn't come to get me. I grew concerned, and knew I had two choices. I could continue to wait, or get down and head back by myself. As I made up my mind on what to do, I took notice that everything around me had gotten very quiet. Fear suddenly took hold of me. I had felt it before in my life, but not to this level or intensity. My eyes darted around and looked for the squirrels or birds that had populated the woods around me all day, only to find that they had gone. I couldn't see anything around me, yet I knew I wasn't alone, that something was out there. The fear kept rising, but why? I still hadn't seen anything. Regardless, my senses screamed at me to go, run, get out of there. I knew that something wasn't right, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. The sun was sinking, and it was getting darker by the second. I now knew that no one was coming to get me, and that I was going to have to make a go of it on my own. I got ready to get out of the stand, then did everything you shouldn't do with a 30 30 lever action rifle when climbing out of a stand. I half cocked the rifle because I knew I'd be most vulnerable and exposed as I climbed out of the stand and down the willow tree. I couldn't see much of anything around me, yet I couldn't shake this feeling that something was there, close by. Slowly, I navigated down the tree, taking care with each foot placement, until I reached the last step. From there, I planned on jumping. 
Without a second's hesitation, I leapt. I hit the ground and quickly recovered. I got up, and now I was facing down a path or what might have been an old deer trail. What little bit of light was left illuminated the open space in front of me. It was then I spotted something rise just off the trail to my right about 30 feet. It towered like nothing I'd ever seen before. I guess now that it stood over seven or maybe eight feet. My body tensed and the fear that I thought was elevated already rose to almost sheer terror. Instinctually, I cocked the hammer fully back on the rifle and threw it onto my shoulder. Just as I did that, whatever this thing was raised one leg, stretched it out, and placed it on the opposite side of the trail. It now straddled both sides. Its massive frame focused on me and my rifle. I have to laugh now, because, believe it or not, I began to think about hunter safety. Know your target and beyond. My mind screamed at me for just a brief second before I hollered back. Know your target? I don't know what I'm even looking at. Whatever it was could only be described as massively tall, around seven to eight feet tall and wide, its shoulders spanning feet across the trail. The fading light of the day shined from behind it, making it impossible to make out good detail, but the outline was crystal clear. I made out that it was standing on two feet, had legs, arms, and a head. I could also make out hair or fur or whatever you want to call it. I thought to myself, what am I seeing with the butt of the rifle in my shoulder? I put the scope on it and look through. My scope was low powered with a yellow filter which illuminated everything a bit more, but still not enough to clearly make out what I was seeing. I placed the reticle of my scope on the vitals, placed my finger on the trigger and stood ready to unload everything if it made one move towards me. The entire time I thought that I was going to die, that this was it. I still couldn't make out any facial features of the creature because the light came from behind it. But I knew this thing could easily kill me. With all the slack taken out of the trigger, I was ready to fire, but it didn't move. Both of us were at a standstill, our gazes fixed on the other. I couldn't say how long we stood staring each other down, but it felt like forever. Then, without notice, it leapt to the right from where it stood. All I heard now was crashing as it fled. A minute later, there was silence. I then saw something farther down the trail. It was the silhouette of a deer. It dawned on me that I had come in between this thing and its meal. I assumed it must be mad at me, so I did the worst thing possible. I turned and ran. With each step, my heart pounded to the point I swore it would explode. My vision narrowed, which made it harder to get a good view. To my right, the direction the thing had gone, I heard movement. I now thought the thing was going to circle around and come for me. I got up, swung my rifle around, and again readied myself to fire, but nothing was there. Without wasting another second, I pivoted and raced off again down the trail. I don't know how long it took me, but 
I did finally make it back to camp. Not a second after my arrival, my uncle and everyone began to haze me. They could tell I had been spooked with someone joking that I looked like I'd seen a ghost. What they didn't know was I had seen something far worse. I asked my uncle why he hadn't come to get me, and he replied that he had tried but couldn't find me. I didn't know what to believe. All I knew was I was glad to have made it out of there alive, as I was sure my demise was certain. I rushed inside the cabin with my rifle, only to have my uncle remind me he didn't like weapons inside, only because he said they sweated from the change in temperature. I told him I would clean it and went inside. I wiped the rifle down and carefully hid it, loaded under my bed, and slid my sheath knife underneath my pillow. While I had made it back, I couldn't calm down and didn't feel safe. A large window overlooked my bed, and all I could imagine was awakening to that thing hovering over me just outside the thin panes of glass. I could see it crashing through the walls, taking hold of me, and, well, that would be it. Needless to say, I didn't sleep an hour that night. Come morning, everyone was up, and the last thing I wanted to do was go back out there. I hadn't told anyone what had happened, but they knew something was wrong. However, that didn't stop them from hazing or making fun of me. It's just what they did. I told my dad I didn't feel good, that I had gotten too cold the day before, so maybe I could take the stand closest to the cabin. My plan was to bag a deer as fast as I could and get the hell out of there. I knew this was my only way out. I arrived to my new stand. And believe it or not, I got a deer rather quickly. I was excited, mainly because I could now head home. Then, I was told there were more tags to fill, so I was to help drive deer to the others. My heart sank. I felt defeated and terrified because I'd have to be back out there. With my hands white-knuckled on my rifle, I walked through the woods. My head swiveled back and forth every time I heard a sound. With each crack of a branch or crunch of leaves, I snapped my head with the expectation of seeing a monster pop up, only to see a deer or squirrel. I made it through the drive, which ended the hunt. Hours later, we headed home. Looking back now, I think it's fair to say my life was on the line that day, and the one thing that saved me was my old 30 30 lever action rifle. I can still feel it angrily looking at me, both of us locked in a standoff with neither committed to act. I went back to the property a few years later, but I made sure I never went to that part of the property again. I figured that was his territory, and also figured he was probably still mad at me. As the years passed, I tried to convince myself that I hadn't really seen what I saw, that it all was the wild imagination of a 12-year-old. I dared never mention it to my family for fear they'd mock or ridicule me, so I held in the fear from that day never uttering a word to another until now. Even in my best efforts to wipe my memory of that time or imagine it was something else, I always regressed. I don't think I'll ever forget that day. Like so many others I've heard tell their tale, it's something that becomes seared into your memory. I still venture back into the woods, but now 
I go with the knowledge there are creatures there that could do us considerable harm. When I go, I'm always armed. Whatever those things are, they know what a rifle is. And I believe they also know what it's capable of. My rifle saved me that day 29 years ago. I know this without question. I also know that on that day, there were two hunters in those woods. I hope you enjoyed those stories. And if you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I post new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And if you have your notifications on, you'll be the first to know when those go live. Again, thank you so much for watching the video. And until next time, bye!